What's going on there, folks? Good evening. The Earthmaster here on this Monday evening. It is February 28th, the uh, last day of February tw uh, 2022 is the date, about 6.23 p.m. California time. And the latest earthquake out there shows a 2.3 earthquake into the region of Southern California right there. Let's go ahead and check out the latest info here on the map here from the USGS. Showing that uh, activity, well, not here on this map, but uh, definitely on the All Magnitudes map should be picking up the activity. It's kind of ramping up out here along the West Coast, showing some movement up and down the West Coast area, pretty much right around the Southeast Bakersfield area. Uh, southward showing a little bit of up uptick in movement here. Seeing a 2.3 along the White Wolf Fault Zone here at uh, about 4.6 kilometers. Also some deeper movement. Look at this deep earthquake activity south of uh, Los Angeles area. Actually within the Los Angeles area. 1.5 at 23 kilometers. There's some deep structure there going on with the plate dynamics here. And uh, deep activity is not necessarily good in terms of earthquake activity here in, in the uh, concrete jungles of LA. Let me tell you. Uh, definitely been seeing some movement up here. Outside of the San Cayetano Fault Zone, northward, well north of the uh, Los Angeles area, but overall seismic activity has been kind of uh, uh, it's been kind of active in some unusual zones recently uh, in the southern part of the state here of California. So gotta watch out, gotta watch out what's going on there. You know, we don't know everything when it comes to the plates out here. We don't know every single fault system, and we don't know uh, specifically what's to come, do we? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Uh, movement here, just off of the uh, Elsinore fault system here, the uh, Juli uh, Julian, Julian section, one of the two, take your pick, 1.6 there at 4.3 kilometers, and some movement also off the coast of San Diego here. i uh, seen a, a pair of earthquakes here, 1.1 and a 1.4 at deep levels. Talking about uh, 16 to 14 kilometers there. So there's a lot of dynamics there. We don't really understand there when it comes to the uh, specifics of deep plate activity. So it's, uh, it's very interesting to see this deeper movement here into the Southern California region. Uh, the Salton Sea, pretty quiet. The San Andreas Fault, it's sleeping for now, but uh, who knows when it's going to wake up? Who knows if it's even uh, active anymore here on the Southern part? That uh, remains to be seen. Ridgecrest area kind of filling in a little bit. Uh, one earthquake here within the last hour. Uh, just to the northeast there at 12.4 uh, kilometers below the surface. Even that area is kind of seeing some deeper movement tonight uh, with a 0.7. So uh, it's uh, kind of unusual to see this deeper earthquake activity taking place here in Southern California. Even uh, amongst the thrust fault system. So definitely something crunching up there down there I should say uh, one earthquake here in the Yosemite Valley 1.3 at uh, 5.9 kilometers it looks like uh, some movement also outside of Long Valley Super Volcano just to the west or to the east here Long Valley Super Volcano you can kind of see that flatland area of the caldera uh, this activity uh, generally light but taking place just to the west there of that region uh, what do we got here? Northern California out here uh, across the state here. Some movement into the southern end of the Cascadia. Subduction zone quakes kicking up here. While we're on it, let's go ahead and check out the tremor map here of the Cascadia. Once again, look at this. Zero epicenters of tremor. I, I'm kind of wondering if this is accurate or not. We're seeing quite a bit of uh, surface surface quaking here in the region of Northern California including some deep subduction zone quakes. Now, you can't tell me that there's not tremor activity taking place here with these deeper uh, subduction zone quakes. There's got to be. If we're seeing a heightened movement here of uh, earthquake activity down dip into the Cascadia subduction zone down there just prior to the tremor area, right? Tremor activity tends to run about 25 to 35 kilometers into the subduction zone down dip downstream. Uh, you can't tell me there's not something going on down here. So I don't know if there's a blackout going on here with the tremor activity map here lately from the PNSN, but it's been absent of earthquake activity uh, or as far as tremor activity goes here 
in the uh, in the in in these recent times here. I, I don't know who to trust. I mean, I'm not in control of these maps, so you know, it's like we're just reporting what these folks here are telling us, and who knows if these folks are even being accurate in reporting that activity. It just seems a little odd to see surface quaking there upstream from the trimmer department here, which is further down dip, and uh, there's no trimmer. So it's odd, it's very odd, let me tell you. Uh, some movement further across the Northern California area. This activity pretty deep as well, uh, 1.7 and 2.3, uh, 15 kilometers well below the eastern part of the Sierra Nevadas there, 2.3. Uh, definitely getting some, uh, some deeper movement out here along the west coast, and uh, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we need to definitely pay attention to what's going on for sure. Pacific Northwest has remained absolutely quiet, and that's a little eerie in itself. Uh, one little quake here at Mount St. Helens, right smack dab on the summit, 0.9, right there at 4.4 kilometers, where we would normally see volcanic activity. Up here to the north, 0.4 near Marble Mount, Washington, 3.4 kilometers. Not for sure what's up there in that area, but uh, Bacon Peak, Bacon, oh yeah. Uh, Bacon Peak looks like a little bit of activity up there as well. Uh, Yellowstone, let's go ahead and check them out here on the latest overview of Yellowstone National Park. Of course, we had some earthquake activity around the borehole region earlier in the day today, really in the day, early morning, uh, Monday hours there. Uh, since then, a little bit of spiky activity. Spiky activity is indicative of localized earthquake activity, but this is very small uh, microquake activity striking up here um, within the past few hours. So uh, nothing significant popping off there at Yellowstone National Park today. No magma movement, no uh, major chamber uh, magma chamber uh, changes at all. So everything looks kind of a, just a little mellow day there at Yellowstone National Park. Getting back here to the USGS map here. Uh, this activity outside of Texas and Oklahoma dying off. Some older movement. We haven't seen any renewed earthquake activity across the eastern part of the North American plate. And that includes the states there. Uh, Puerto Rico area. Of course, this uh, area is always a hot spot for movement. It appears that it's dying down a little bit. Let's see what we got here within the past 30 days of total tally in the earthquake department here. Oh, wow, that's a lot of activity. Look at this movement here. That's almost a 800 earthquakes here within the last 30 days of the Puerto Rico area. Now you got to remember the USGS does not want to report on other areas outside of Puerto Rico like the Dominican Republic, Haiti area. They pretty much only show 4.0 and above. So trust me, there's a lot of threes kicking off here in this region. But looking at the Puerto Rico area in itself, that's a pretty significant swarm. We're, talk we're talking about uh, close to 667 earthquakes within the Puerto Rico area within the last 30 days. So uh, most of those um, below the 4.0 threshold. Let's go ahead and check out 2.5 and above. 137 earthquakes. Anything above the 4.5? No, zip nada. So this has been an ongoing swarm here in Puerto Rico for quite a long time. And the dynamics here kind of points towards the, the uh, Morietos, uh, Morietos trough. Uh, kind of a subduction zone, a deep earthquake movement here that does take place. Generally speaking, the activity that's striking here within this region is somewhat deep. This is not very shallow earthquake activity. It extends roughly a, around 14, 17 kilometers. Some, some shallow, some a little bit deeper. But uh, either way, the average comes out to about 17 uh, uh, kilometers here for the uh, earthquake depth of many of these earthquakes here. So... It's been ongoing for quite some time. What, what is leading to? It's hard to say. All I know is it's been ongoing for quite a few months, if not years now, in the southwestern part of Puerto Rico. Uh, it comes and goes, and it, it does as, it's ple as it pleases. South America region, uh, a little bit less active tonight in terms of earthquake activity here along the Puerto Rico, or the uh, Peru Chile Trench. 4.3 and a 4.5. One of these earthquakes here, pretty deep inland uh, around the Chile area. We have seen things die off here in the 4.0 threshold. Uh, looks like uh, only one earthquake to report. 4.3 at 13.8 kilometers into the South America region. 
Uh, also, uh, what do we got here in the Papua New Guinea area? 4.8. Getting some deeper uh, earthquake activity stretching across the region here. 130 kilometers for a 4.8 here. Uh, just in the past uh, 20 minutes or so there at Papua New Guinea. Uh, a little bit of swarming outside of the Flor Sea, the Savusi. North of the uh, island here, this little Indonesia island. Still seeing a swarm of movement there with uh, quite a few forests kicking up uh, into that area. New Zealand, we have been watching this area pretty closely uh, for some subsequent movement here around the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone. Uh, so far, only uh, 4.4 and a 4.5, well inland, well deep, well deep into the subduction zone. So you got to think about the subduction zone quakes here, uh, kind of what they're doing to the upstream nature here, the upstream stress in this region. So definitely uh, uh, some activity in the North Island, New Zealand area that we got to watch here uh, in the Bay of Pliny and the subsequent activity that it could produce here around the Hikarangi subduction zone and the Kermadec Trench here northward. Uh, specifically around the Kermadec Trench, a 4.8 shallow earthquake activity here. And that was before the subsequent deep movement here uh, south of that region. Uh, Tonga, Fiji Islands area, seeing a swarm of deep movement. Not a swarm, I should say deuces. There's a deuces here, quake, 4.2 and a 4.6, well below 600 kilometers. That's pretty deep, folks. Deuces, no doubt. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Mariana Trench and the Philippine Plate, some activity well inland. That one's deep. You got to remember, well inland here, this is the subduction zone, the Mariana Trench area, and northward, this uh, this little trench here. I'm not, I'm not even going to, what is that, Izu Trench? Uh, well inland, uh, getting a, quite a bit of deep movement here. 477 kilometers there uh, near the uh, Uzu, Izu Islands in Japan, south of Japan. Uh, 4.1 at 477 kilometers. That's pretty deep. And, uh, of course, that activity earlier today, that's a pretty good swarm, right? That's a pretty good swarm of activity. It looks like... Uh, a 5.1 uh, earlier, the least, the latest quake there on the map, and that was uh, oh about four hours or so ago. The latest quake there at 10 kilometers, so pretty shallow earthquake movement. You got to remember here, we have seen a lot of subsequent deep earthquake activity, not only up here in the Sea of Osk, but uh, further south uh, and and also inland into the Japan area. We've seen a lot of deep movement here over the last few weeks and past few months actually and uh, with very little subsequent shallow earthquake activity so gotta remember if we're getting a lot of deep movement what's it doing to the upstream activity right well it's building up so kind of what we're seeing there a little bit of activity ramping up here over the last 24 hours there just off the coast there of japan northern part here along the southern end of the kuro kamachaka trench so this area right here I've said it quite a few times in numerous videos. We've got to be on high alert here for the uh, potential larger magnitudes there in that region. Uh, Alaska, beautiful state of Alaska. I need to get up there. Really, anybody got a cabin up there? I need to go up there and visit the Alaska region here pretty soon. Uh, beautiful area, no doubt. Some movement here within the last hour. A couple microquakes throughout the region. Uh, no major swarming to take note. Cook Inlet, though. Uh, if we talk about swarming, that's about the only area, but it's very typical here. Very deep earthquake activity in the Cook Inlet region. Uh, some of it stretching down to about 100 kilometers there into the subduction zone. Uh, Gulf of Alaska, Pacific, and the North American Plate uh, subduction zone area. Uh, what else we got? Eastern uh, Russia looks pretty quiet now. No major activity. We did see some movement up here. Uh, a couple fours kicking off there last night. Uh, throughout the Middle East and other areas, all pretty quiet for now. Um, South America Trench, this earthquake, uh, or at least the South Sandwich Trench, I should say. Uh, this activity from earlier today, 5.2. Go ahead and check out the, uh, of course, Yellowstone's pretty absent. Tremor map is absent tonight. Go ahead and check out Earthquakes Canada here. And still... Uh, a little bit of activity up here around the Alaska region, just outside of the Yukon uh, territory. 
Uh, latest earthquake there into Alaska, 2.0. A couple small microquakes in that region today. The rest of uh, Canada looks pretty quiet right now. Go ahead and go over to the uh, GeoNet site into our folks and our friends there in New Zealand. Uh, at least as far as a week and above. Shows the latest earthquake there from yesterday, a 4.8 into the northern part of the uh, North Island region. But if we go, the all magnitudes here. A little bit of activity, some ones and whatnot. Kicking up further south. No major swarming to take note there in New Zealand currently. But this here kind of shows the uh, last uh, earthquake activity here from the, uh, well, it shows last 365 days. But uh, movement over here to the west kind of shows the hours and whatnot of those uh, earthquakes and given times. So things kind of calming down temporarily for right now. We'll see how long that lasts, right? Uh, let's see the solar weather activity. See if these eyeballs are still watching us out here in the sun. I know the uh, humans here on this earth are kind of uh, kind of entertaining, aren't they? So we got the pair of eyeballs here. These uh, sunspots kind of facing away from Earth. They have been consistent in size ever since they rotated around the bend. I mean, it's just odd. And I find that quite freaky. <laughs> it just, I've never seen sunspots consistently stay the same size throughout their journey across the sun here as the uh, as they face the Earth side. So a little bit of build up there from 2958, but these guys need to go away because it's freaking me out. And uh, they're not doing nothing. They're just kind of sitting there just staring at the current ongoing activities here of Earth. Uh, solar weather, as far as sunspot activity and flaring goes, 35% chance of sea flare. The three-day geomagnetic forecast looks pretty green across the board after tonight with only a, uh, uh, looks like a little minor Potential storming at the higher latitudes there at 40% chance. Uh, coronal hole activity. We do have a coronal hole facing us. And that's going to be this activity right here, 61. Uh, due earth side looking directly at us. So that uh, wind stream should be heading towards earth here uh, within a few days or so. So stay tuned for that. All right, folks, stay, uh, stay safe out there. Just once again, just announcing that I did add the uh, USGS. Uh, activity and also the EMSC models here showing the uh, latest earthquake activity here on the globe. So if it does look a little bit more active in terms of the magnitudes and multitudes here, the EMSC gives us a little better view of swarming activity in the two and three range, something that the USGS does not show. But this is kind of integrated, integrated in terms of the USGS data and also the EMSC data. So it's kind of like a combined earthquake globe of uh, two agencies there showing that movement. So I think it's kind of cool to notice and note when it comes to monitoring threes and twos in area, uh, areas of the world when it comes to certain uh, certain earthquake uh, plate areas that we need to watch here. So, uh, yeah. All right, folks. Um, have a good day. Good night. Don't forget to check out the Earthmaster store there. There is uh, products and whatnot here on all the videos that YouTube integrated into the uh, system here. So check it out. It's cool couple cool shirts and sweaters i mean i ordered myself a couple sh uh cool uh shirts and they are actually pretty neat there was some seismograph stations and the earthmaster logo on the back and uh, vice versa a whole bunch of different designs i will be adding on to the uh, teespring store over the coming weeks also some weather integration there when it comes to my so uh, my uh, storm chasing career kind of ready to get out there to the uh Oklahoma, Texas region here pretty soon for the uh, severe weather season that's kicking up here in March and April. So uh, I know got quite a few fans here that love the uh, watching the storm chasing. And uh, quite a few folks that just want to see the earthquake activity, and that's great too. So we kind of do a little bit of both here on this channel. Uh, mostly earthquake activity and volcanic activity here on these updates. But uh, man, when it comes to storm season, I cannot resist a good thunderstorm there. And uh, that's kind of what we're looking forward to here as we head into March and April. So I will be having some items here on the store that are weather related. So look for that here pretty soon. All right, folks, have a good day. Good night out there. And uh, make sure you guys stay safe. Peace out.